from the city council, and she's talking about how to make your home more efficient in your heating and your other things. And if, if you, you really can learn a lot from you, but she also does home visits, and these are free. So you can look on it as a tech, a great stream page, really, because it's a DC season. But she will come to your home and tell you to check your temperature and your hot water and all these things to see how you can save on your electricity. And this is open to everybody. So if you want to learn about how to make your home more efficient, come along, bring your friends too. For all your interest this evening and the useful society of having more concert in the church at 2.30 this afternoon with the new army singers, Senator Kershaw and John Bunbridge, and I can use it from the Borshaw Park Prime's paper. I normally tell a story on a Sunday morning and just tell two years this is the first. When you're invited to a meeting, you don't send apologies. No. I was about to listen to an inner city clergy group meeting. I had a very bad reason not to do so. I said, apology. I got a message saying, we really like you to host our special service on Pentecost evening. So there will be a service um, here next Sunday evening at 7. Everyone is very welcome. I've borrowed all the lists from the Roman Catholic Cathedral, but I've borrowed an enemy to the choir. Certainly, though, we have seen plenty of people from here. And as I said, you can have the hospitality afterwards. Um, if you want to know more or want to offer your help, let me know today before I go to Berlin or over the course of the week. Thank you. We'll pause for a moment and then we'll begin the service itself. Welcome us and you live 
in us. Our first hymn is from Rebus Our Psalm, the one all sins, praise the all sustaining word by Colin Gibson. This is the first verse. Praise the all sustaining word, blessing out against the night, inextinguishable flame, beat and burning ever bright. Praise the calm, majestic will, drawing in the stood from ill. Your strength keeps 
me and nothing will harm me. You have been waiting that I might find you and taste your love. Oh, that I had found you sooner. Meditation for Ascension Day by Tom Schindler. We look for you straining our eyes into the far country, but our vision is disrupted by the least, the lost, the littlest, the last among us. We race after you trying to catch up and turn in the corner and find only a homeless family in our path. We wander the streets yearning to find you, calling your name. But it's only a single mother who turns and wearily smiles. A street person whispers, hello. A little girl in pirouettes and takes our hand. Gone. But you are still here, Lord. Help us to see. We resolve to seek the sacred here and now, looking not to the far horizon or the skies, but towards humanity, towards the least and the last. For there we must clearly encounter the Holy Presence. Amen. We say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name.
taxes. I'm the Milky Way. Spiraling galaxy of sparkling stars. I am the solar system. The sun is the star. All the planets adore. I am the sun. A mighty fireball with blazing stars. I am the moon, an orbiting satellite spellbound by Earth. I am the atmosphere, back to the Earth with breathable air. I am the Earth, a wondrous planet bursting with life. and the land, encompassing earth with gravel and rock. I am an ocean of dancing blue waves to sing on each shore. I am a country, mountains, fields and rivers zigzag over me. I am a city, a mishmash of people dwell in my belly. I am a neighborhood, a cluster of houses, a home of friends. We are a family being together in a school we I am a child. Both our readings are from the New Testament. And the first is from the book of Acts, chapter 1, beginning at the first verse. The promise of the Holy Spirit. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, preparing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. The ascension of Jesus. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or period that the Father is set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, they were, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward the heavens, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward him? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into him, will come in the same way as you saw him go into him. Second reading from the Gospel of Luke. 
chapter 24, beginning of 44. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then they opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what my father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. The ascension of Jesus. And he said that he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple, praising God. There is a story told of a traveller in rural Ireland struggling to get his bearings. Confused and distracted, he faced down a passerby and asks, How did you get to Dublin? The answer he gets is, If I were you, I wouldn't stop from here. <coughs> Yet here we are once again on Ascension Sunday, hearing a literally incredible story. The story of the end of the resurrection appearances of Jesus and the start of waiting for something new. How is the story of this transition? This threshold is told is in the language, imagery, and understanding of the world far removed from ours. <coughs> Jesus is taken up from earth to heaven to up there. One of the early cosmonauts of let's say Leonard, only channeling the sanctioned atheism of his country, said that he looked for God when he made a spacewalk, but there was no sign. We struggle to know what to do with the story we heard today. Was I had a very intense conversation with a retired and generally liberally minded minister who struggled with the story. I was trying to work out how far Jesus had got if he was travelling in the speed of light, and how he would survive the vacuum of space. Someone else in that conversation said, he was Jesus, and we don't know what powers he had. But for the to escape of the ritualism of the context and culture in which the story was told. The story at the end of the resurrection appearances a time earned in preparation for something new. It is not how we would tell the story, but we too have been left gazing ever with this morning, the story of the ascension of Jesus. All good things come to an end, even Easter. A season of drawings were close. Technically, as I said earlier, last Thursday was ascension day, but many churches take this last Sunday of Easter time to reflect on the Ascension. Here, in these last days of Easter, we mark time when strange and elusive narratives of resurrection of Jesus seem here and there come to an end, and the disciples are waiting for something new, a waiting fulfilled in the story of Pentecost next week. 
Historians we hear in church between Easter and Pentecost are carefully structured around key points in the Jewish liturgical year. The death of Jesus is set at Passover, and the season of his resurrection comes to an end at Pentecost, the 50th day after Passover, the Feast of Shavuot, a celebration with the giving of the Torah about Sinai. Both Jewish and Christian liturgical calendars tell the story of the move from liberation to establishment, from freedom of Passover and liberation from slavery, and in the death and resurrection of Jesus to the formation of a new order, be that the law code to guide the life of Israel and the birth of the community we recognize as the church. It is telling that the story of our freedom and the creation of our community is told in the framework of an older story, a framework which had been immediately apparent to the earliest followers of Jesus. Understanding this, we can see a coherence, credibility and power to many of the stories we've heard in the last few weeks. The resurrection narratives in which Jesus sometimes only known at the very end of the encounter encourages his followers to not be afraid and restores hope in them. The Pentecost story where the new boldness and faith of the Jesus community catches like fire and spread beyond the confines of those who knew and remembered him. Well, that's to come. So far, so good. But what of today? I might have been wiser not to deal with the ascension today. I had the option not to. But let me tell you what I see as the truth and power of the story. What for me is its most cogent, most compelling aspect. It must have us by and notice that I think it's really important. If the disciples have found new hope and new energy in encounter with the risen Jesus, then his ascension is going away, it might seem like some kind of abandonment, an occasion for warning to overcome them again, but it doesn't. This is not the divine abandonment, of God taking leave. They return to Jerusalem rejoicing, hopeful, anticipating what will be. The hope, the possibility and energy that have been found in the resurrection of Jesus were now to be found in the community gathered around his memory. A community which rolled like a rocket and crew of astronauts will soon take off. The igniting of that fire will be recalled next week at Pentecost. To remember, the ascension should not leave us gazing heavenward. It should not leave us wistful, anxious, or alone. We should direct us back towards the city, not towards Jerusalem, but towards our community, whatever and wherever it may be. Remembering the ascension is an invitation to reflect upon the possibilities of our humanity and of all humanity. It is not, though it might appear to be, about an escape arising up from the earth, but an invitation to make our earth more like heaven while I would dream of what life can be which so empowered Jesus and to which he died. Ascension Sunday calls us to this endeavour, to hope, mission, struggle for the world's flourishing, trusting that the light, fire, sustaining our hope and endeavour is of God's own nature. Remembering Ascension today is profoundly down to earth. It is in the new order about to come at Pentecost, the life, possibility, and spirit we find in the story of Jesus and his resurrection isn't up there waiting for a passing possible Lord to wait alone, but here amongst us, embodied in and between people. In the words of Ryan Williams, Jesus hasn't gone away. He has gone deeper into the heart of reality, our reality and God's. He has become far more than a visible friend and companion. He has shown himself to be the very centre of our life, the source of our loving energy in the world, 
and the source of our prayerful, trusting, and waiting on God. He has enabled us to be actively and hopefully engaged in the world, to make the kind of difference that love makes. As we consecrate the mystery of Jesus, gone from sight to get fully present to humanity, and as we prepare to assert once more at Pentecost that it is amongst us that the life, the energy, the possibility of redemption that we, name God, is pleased to dwell, let us commit ourselves to this then, to being the kind of difference that love makes.
We lament the lives lost in the hostile fire in Wellington this week. We lament the ongoing war in Ukraine and the death and suffering visited on that country. We pray for those we know facing illness, facing an unwelcome change, facing the challenge of new beginnings. We make these and all our prayers in the name of Jesus, the story of the sacred spoken in our humanity. Amen. Well, I'll take a part of it. Here we bring our gifts of many and talents they've been used to reflect your love in the world.
underlying questions ahead. Try to fathom what would follow this. What will you do? How will you live? You will want to outrun the grief. You will want to turn toward the horizon, watching for what was lost, to come back, to return to you, and never leave again. For now, hear me when I say, all you need to do is still yourself, it is to turn toward one another, it is to stay. Wait and see what comes to fill the gaping hole in your chest. Wait with your hands open to receive what could never come and accept what is empty and hollow. You can't know it now. You cannot even imagine what lies ahead. But I tell you the day is coming when breath will fill your lungs as it never has before. And with your own ears, you'll hear words coming to you new and startling your dream dreams. And you'll see the world ablaze with blessing. Wait for it. Still yourself. Stay. We now extinguish this candle and let us say it together.
It's just... 